Bitch, I'm about to blow up. Uh huh. Say what? Bitch, I'm about to blow up. Mark Bell's Powercast here answering more questions from Instagram. Here we go. Let's get started. Uh, Jeremy Lodge asks, is there any carryover from training high bar to increase your low bar squat? Uh, and yes, I believe there is carryover. High bar obviously can work your core a little bit differently, and it does build up your quads. The stronger your low back are, is, excuse me, the stronger your quads are, uh, that's how you're going to increase your squat. Practicing the competition movement is important. Um, but accessory movements like the high bar, front squat, stuff like that will help out a lot. Presto de Ginge asks, what's grass-fed beef taste like? Um, I don't know if I'm a beef expert or why you're asking me, but uh, it tastes good. Uh, sometimes tastes a little meatier, a little gamier than regular beef. Um, and people say the, you know, the fat profile is better or whatever, this and that. I think if you can't afford it, might as well go for it. Any tips... Uh, for anyone that struggles to keep everything tight and engaged when doing reps. Anything over three reps, I start to lose my positioning of form. Um, my main tip is to kind of reset. Um, so in the bench press, down up, big breath, flex, go. Same thing with the squat. Sometimes people will start banging out reps and they'll just drop, drop, drop. After each one, try to reset a little bit. Big breath, flex, go. Stand up, big flex, uh, big breath, flex, go. Same with the deadlift, you can kind of reset at the bottom and go. That'll help you kind of maintain tightness throughout all these reps. Um, how long did it take you to get your first 500 pound deadlift and what's your body weight? Uh, and what was your body weight at the time? Um, my body weight at the time was probably around 190 pounds. I don't really remember, but I got my 500 pound deadlift fairly early in my training. To be honest, it was, it was well before super training. I started to really plateau around 520 pounds. That's kind of right before I went to super training. My form was probably garbage. Um, I don't know. I was probably deadlifting for a year, maybe two years, uh, before I got my first 500-pound pull. Alternate speed exercises if you don't have bands or chains. Uh, that's from Ryan Howard. Ryan Howard's referring to like dynamic days or speed work. Uh, you do not need bands or chains for speed work. You can just use lighter weights. So you can do straight weight. You can do deficit. Um, you can do front squats. You can do anything. Uh, you're just going to be messing around from maybe the 55 to 75 percent range, trying to work on your form, trying to put everything you got into the bar. Bands and chains do help because when you start to accelerate that bar and there's nothing uh, pushing back on you, uh, mentally you don't want to give the bar everything because then you're going to lose balance. It's going to hurt your joints. Um, but if the bar is pulling, if you have bands or chains, they're gradually getting heavier and you can give them into uh, give into them a little bit more. You can accelerate a little bit better, but they are not necessary. Um. Kenny Boy uh, asks, what do you think about a mini cut after six months of bulking if I feel that I've gained too much unwanted fat? Um, without knowing your goals and stuff, I think that's fine. If you bulk for about six months, maybe take four weeks. Uh, four weeks to kind of lose a little bit of weight, get a little bit of uh, fat off of you, and then go back into the process. Um, once again, it all depends on your goals, but I think that's a fine idea. Um, Jay Parmar asks about LeBron versus Curry. Who do I got? Um, I have the Cavaliers. Uh, I am a LeBron fan, but I'm more just a Cavaliers fan. I like Kyrie Irving. I like the whole squad. Um, and I think their experience is just going to take them over. I get this question on everything. It's fucking, it's great. Oh, man. I just lost my spot. We're screwed. Here we go. I'll find it. Give me a second here. Give me a second here. One more second. Here we go. How old are you and how long have you been working out? Um, I'm 26 right now, and I've been working out probably since I was... Uh, a freshman of high school, so whatever that is, 14, 13, something like that. Um, and then I started powerlifting maybe about four, five, uh, six years ago. Protein shakes for 14 and 15 year olds, uh, yay or nay? Um, I, you know, personally, I think protein shakes are kind of a nay for everybody. They're just a protein source and they're fine. Um, but I would suggest uh, trying to get all your protein from food. You know, trying to eat some lean meats, eggs, egg whites. Um, protein shakes here and there are fine, but I don't think they're necessary for anybody. Why do my knees uh, buckle sometimes when walking out squats? Sometimes it's not even close to a one rep max. Uh, maybe it's how you're bracing. Maybe it's your stance. If you're walking out super narrow, but you squat kind of wide, um, you know, it's just going to take practice. Uh, and maybe, maybe it's a weak ligament for all I know. Um, but... Uh, Try to really brace yourself before you unrack the weight. Big breath, pull that weight into you, a couple steps back. Efficiency of walkouts is very important. 
Um, so try to get set up in your stance, uh, maybe one to three steps, excuse me, maybe two to three steps, one's almost impo impossible. Um, and then also, um, yeah, that's about it. Make sure you're not walking out too far. You don't have to walk 10 feet away from the rack, you know? How do you set up your conjugate program? Any tips on training or setting up my own uh, from Eric Mandeville. Uh Conjugate style training for those that don't know is basically you have two upper body days, two lower body days. One day is maximal effort. You're going as heavy as you can, typically in an exercise variation. Uh, and then the other di day is a dynamic day. You get a little bit more volume. Uh, you can set it up however you want, man. Uh, there's way too many uh, factors, but the point is that it's supposed to be simple. Uh, and it's supposed to just be rotating maximal effort um, exercises. Well, the other day, you're doing a little bit closer to the competition lift and working on speed and form. How many uh, days a week do I deload? Or, excuse me, do I lift? And how often do I deload? Um, I lift four days a week. Um, and I typically don't really deload. Uh, what we do is more speed work or work with a little bit lighter weights or reps. Um, and that's just uh, how we give our body a break. You can't always be maxing out every single day for the rest of your life. You'll get injured or progress will stall. So what we do is when we're feeling beat up um, or just about every other week, we'll go a little bit lighter, work on our form, and work on our technique and speed. How much will a mustache add to your total? I don't know where all these jokes started with beards and mustache. Maybe it was Brandon Lilly, old bird dog, because that guy's got a mean-ass beard and he lifts hella weight. But I'm sorry to tell you, facial hair won't help you. You're screwed. What else we got? People are like having a conversation on here. I can't even keep up. Is it possible to hop on supplements for strength gains while maintaining body weight? Um, supplements um, over the counter won't do anything. Supplements illegally, uh, I don't know that much about. So I don't know if it's possible to maintain your body weight while hopping on like steroids or something. I don't know. Uh, exactly how that works to be honest I'd imagine you're going to gain weight if you hop on steroids I think that's just how it goes what do wrist wraps help with uh, I understand belt I understand knee sleeves uh, and knee wraps but what do those wrist wrap things do uh, basically wrist wraps um, all they're going to do is, is help support your wrist they're going to help um, keep your wrist a little bit safer and in the bench press what we want is kind of the barbell here in your hand wrist straight and then wrist, forearm, elbow, all in line at the bottom of the bench. You don't really want to be like this, and you don't want to be too much like this. You also don't want that barbell in your fingers. That's going to make it behind your uh, leverage point in your elbow, and that's all. It's just going to be a little bit weaker, and it's also going to hurt. So just keep your wrist straight on the squat or the deadlift. Um, on the squat, people believe that it's just uh, more of a pain thing and a comfort thing. On the deadlift, some people will wrap it. If you wrap real tight on your forearm, it'll just naturally keep your hands a little bit more closed. So some people believe it helps with their grip. What music do you listen to mostly? Uh, mostly I listen to hip hop, um, old hip hop, new hip hop, just about anything kind of rap. Some R&B, some oldies. I like some funk. I like a little bit of everything, but mostly hip hop. If you could pick two attributes of powerlifting training... Uh, that you can directly relate to finding success in the business world, uh, what would they be? Um, there's a bunch, but uh, most things are just like kind of consistency and dedication, uh, both in powerlifting, life, basketball, any other sport. What I learned from an early age uh, saying that I use often is it's called sacrificing for the unknown. Um, basically, is there's a certain amount of work you have to put in, um, and you don't know what the result may be. You have to work really hard, regardless. To be successful, there's a little bit of luck, a lot of hard work, um, and then taking chances and, and grasping opportunities. So, same in powerlifting. You could do, you could be the hardest worker in the gym, um, eat right, sleep right, and you don't know if you'll ever reach that 600-pound deadlift. You may never know. You know, right now you're at 550, but you're busting your ass. Uh, but you put in that work sacrificing for the unknown that that you may never reach it but you hope you do chances are if you work right uh, and you work long enough consistently most dedication that you will uh, and that's kind of what it is in business you know just chipping away every single day uh, towards whatever goal it is um, whatever you're trying to accomplish uh, and hopefully over time you reach that goal and you are successful in business but there is always a chance you're not that's just kind of how life goes so you know just sacrificing every single day uh, the simplest thing to do is just do one thing every single day 
that takes you or uh, that um, gets you one step closer to your goal. That's it. I do that in basketball. That's something simple. Every day, you know, it's it's maybe it's 500 jump shots every single day. Will, will I make it to the NBA? I don't know. But if I do this, it sets me up to a better chance that I will be successful in whatever it is. And that's kind of the same with business and in, and in life. And lifting, obviously. Um, on that note, I think we're going to stop right about there. Uh, subscribe if you guys like the video. Thanks for all the support. Check out Mark Bell's PowerCast on iTunes. Uh, and that's it for me. Thanks, guys.